Over the last roughly 20 years, this two liter turbo has been plagued with timing chain issues. And while it doesn't happen to everybody, if it does happen, you're in for some pretty expensive repairs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to check the timing components to see if you need a new timing chain or a tensioner so that you don't end up part of the Bent Valve Boys Club. Or Girls Club. This car is a 2014 Jetta GLI with a CPPA engine code. But the steps we're gonna do today apply to pretty much every VW, Audi, Porsche, Skoda, Seat around the world that came with any variation of the EA888 engine, which is the two liter turbo, as well as the 1.8 liter turbo. Even though there's a lot of different variants of this engine and some of the details might be a tiny bit different, you should be able to use this video to determine timing chain issues across the board on any of those cars. We're gonna be treating this video like a diagnostic flow chart with a series of go or no go questions that we're going to answer. Now it's really important, don't skip any of this because you may end up overlooking a very vital piece of making sure your timing chains aren't worn or stretched, which is not quite accurate, but it's the term we all use, so just go with it. First up, I gotta check engine light on, so we're gonna scan it for faults. But we have to get in this moldy, nasty piece of and I don't want it. For this job, I'm gonna be using VCDS. If you don't have VCDS, that's totally fine. You can use OBD11. You can probably use just about any scanner. The way you find the information is gonna be a little different, but what you're actually looking at should pretty much be the same. While that loads up, I wanna give you a couple of other things you can check. If you pull faults and you have any kind of fault that says anything about timing, about camshaft, about crankshaft, anything like that, you can almost guarantee you have a severe timing problem. Your timing chain has worn and it's time for all new parts. That's gonna be a P0016, a P0017, a P0341, a P0011, a P000A. Pretty much if it says timing deviation or timing anything or correlation is another red flag word, you got problems. So you probably don't need to do all the rest of these things that I'm about to show you. But here's one you might wanna do no matter what, and that's check your engine oil. A lot of these variations and adjusters are built on oil. And so if you have no oil in your car, uh, it can throw a check engine light for a timing fault. And I have yet to check this one. So you can see it, it's kind of on the bottom quarter of our hash marks. That's totally fine. That's not low enough to cause any kind of timing issues, but it is kind of gross and very watery feeling. If there were no oil on the dipstick and the engine was clattering around and you had timing faults, put oil in your car first, see what happens. Something else I like to do while the scan tool is booting up or while it's scanning to check faults is do a visual inspection. Now you're probably doing this on your own personal car, but it's still worth doing. Sometimes things get away from us and we don't realize something weird had happened. Let me show you what I found on this car that points to something we need to make note of. Our timing side is here on the passenger side and I always just take a quick look at everything I can see easily. I noticed that on our cam adjuster solenoid, we're missing two bolts. Uh, and obviously that's not supposed to be that way. I'm also noticing that this is very likely not the factory part that was in the car. What does that mean? At some point, this has had some kind of work done. Maybe it's had timing chains. I don't really know, but we definitely need to make note of this missing two bolts. If you have a bore scope, you can try taking the oil cap off and going down the oil fill hole with a bore scope. You're looking to see if it has the newer style chain, which I'll be honest, I can't really tell. So don't worry about that test. If you can't do anything with the bore scope down the oil fill hole, it's not that big a deal. There's plenty of other tests that'll give us better information. I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned it. So we're gonna go into auto scan and I'm just gonna look at all of our faults. Do we have other stuff going on in the car? Absolutely, because our battery was completely dead. You can see here, there's faults in just about every system, but for this purpose, we are only worried about the engine. It is also worth mentioning, before you even get the scan tool out, with your car running, listen to how the engine sounds. If it sounds like the chain's banging around, or maybe the car doesn't start and the starters just turn the engine over super fast, damage is probably already done, but we're trying to avoid said damage. Okay, I got 10 fault codes stored. This intake manifold flap is, is a fun story for another video. 
All I'm looking for right now is anything to do with timing. Timing deviation, timing over advanced, exhaust cam out of time, intake cam out of time. This one only has cam adjustment on the intake side, which is important to note. Plenty of the other engines have it on both intake and exhaust. Misfires, which is another potential like, hey, you might have a timing issue. Uh, wait, another intake fault. Intake air temp sensor, signal too high. That's a strange one. Oh, I just wanna point out something. The date this code is stored is the 28th month or the 14th month uh, in 2095. So we have traveled to the future, friends. Here's the good thing. We don't have any faults stored for timing, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a problem. When we get to our measured value block where we actually see the timing adjustment, I'll go a little bit deeper into that. But for right now, it's good, things are good. I'm not gonna clear these codes because I actually need them for another video that we're doing. So depending on what you've found so far is gonna depend on your next step. If you found any of those timing faults that I listed before, you could still do this test. But if your car sounds like it's gonna come apart when it's running, don't do this because I don't want you to end up nuking your timing chain, bending valves while you're trying to test to see if you have bad timing chains. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in this thing, I'm gonna start it up. There's a piece of this puzzle that is really important. The car does need to be up to operating temperature where the idle drops back down to like 760, 800. If it's at high idle, what we're about to do isn't gonna work. And because our battery's dead, let's get the jump box and beep. We're going into our scan tool. It kicked me all the way out because the key went off. We're gonna go into address word zero one. That's our engine. You've already been there because you've checked fault codes. We're going to now go into advanced measured values. You may remember at the beginning of the video, I said like certain generations of these engines getting to the data may be a little bit different. This is where that's going to happen. So over here on the right, Car started misfire. Something else cool about this, look, it has this little trap door for your camera. Yeah, it can ruin the screen with Paul's control gloves. Yeah, Paul ruins clutches, Paul ruins screens. Um, all right, reboot, back to this. Over here on the side where it says LOC, the numbers that it gives you are a long group of numbers. IDE0018, for example, is what the top one says. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the timing adjustment. Look at what just happened. That's how you know it. this is our misfire indicator when our, our hood just starts wobbling around. <laughs> We've gained some fault codes since our first scan, by the way. So you'll see here, IDE00182 is our cam phase position. I wanna add that. I also wanna add our camshaft adjustment intake bank one actual and specified. If you have a car with exhaust adjustment as well, then you wanna add the exhaust measured values and the intake measured values. We have this one, camshaft adaptation intake, makes sense, bank one phase position. This number right here should be zero plus or minus five. And technically, as long as it's in that range, it's good. Now, we'll address maybe some borderline things in a little bit, but that's what you're looking for. So if that number of that on my car is 0.7 is positive eight or negative nine, timing chains. You don't need to do anything else. You need chains. The next thing we're gonna look at is our intake adjustment actual versus specified. You can see our specified number here at the top, 10 degrees, it's fixed. It's chilling right at 10 because that's what it's supposed to be. If you have the older protocol, you're looking at measured value block 93 slash three, 91 slash three, and 91 slash four. Now when comparing actual versus specified, you should be 0.5 apart or within 0.5, I should say. So for us, 9.5, to 10.5 is our range. And you can see we're bouncing all over the place. We're going all the way down to like 6.7, all the way up to 14 something. Technically that's not okay. Why is it doing that? Well, we don't know yet. We're gonna find that out. There's a good possibility that we still do have something going on in our timing circuit. So we're gonna just kind of remember these numbers. You can screenshot, add it to the log, whatever you gotta do to just keep that front of mind. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go into basic settings. My goal here is to force the cam variator to run its cycle. So it's gonna go all the way negative, 
all the way positive and then back to roughly where it should be. Basic setting 93. If you have the older protocol, check it out. It says running, operate brake pedal and depress accelerator pedal. And I don't mean tell it a story about your sad life. I mean, you gotta go all the way in on gas, all the way in on brake, and that'll probably bring the RPM up and it should cycle our cam adjuster. So I'm gonna do that right now. All gas, all brake. We're at about 1800 RPM. Shows running on our scan tool. It finished correctly. That's a good thing, right? If that ran and swept all the way left, all the way right and failed, we would probably have an issue with either the adjuster or the camshaft or the spool valve. So that's good. Let's go back since we ran that test and reevaluate our measured value blocks. So now when we look at our um, actual phase position, we're at zero. So we're right there. Is our actual value on the adjustment side too much? Not enough? I don't know. This proves a pretty good point though. Oftentimes doing one check isn't enough. So now we're gonna pivot to the next test, which will give us a little bit more clarity on what we saw here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the timing chain tensioner directly. We're gonna put eyeballs right on it. Now, I'm gonna take a handful of things off just so you guys can see what I'm seeing. When you're doing this on your car or a customer's car maybe, you don't have to take any of this stuff off. Getting access to this plug, you don't need to take the fender liner or the wheel off like I did. You can get to it from the bottom. You're gonna take a long flat blade screwdriver, kind of like this, and just pry this cover off. You shouldn't get any oil coming out. That one came out super easy. I'll tell you real straight up, they often don't come out as easy as that one did. Now with that cover out, you expose your timing chain tensioner. There are two styles of timing chain tensioner. There's the style you see here, and then style with a little band on it. If your tensioner doesn't look like this, it is time to do a timing chain right now. Like, don't drive it anymore, replace the band style. If it looks like this, we need to do a little more investigation. You can see that this style of tensioner has these ribs that go around the shaft that pushes on the tensioning guide. There can be no more than seven exposed past the end of the tensioner. That is the official, like, if you have seven, it's time to do timing chains on your car, replace the tensioner, replace the guides, time for new tensioners. And the whole, oh look, there's a snail. <laughs> Once you get the plug out, according to the repair manual, you need to rotate the engine around by hand clockwise until the tensioner is out as far as it'll go. That way you didn't catch it on one of like the compressed spots and think your chains are good when in fact they aren't. So this is basically what you're looking at with that plug out. This is the piece of the tensioner that you'll see and you'll notice these parts highlighted in red. Those are the ribs or the threads that we're talking about when I tell you like, look at this and see how many are exposed. This is the end of the tensioner. Anything past the edge right here, the edge of the body is technically exposed. So if you have seven ribs just just like is indicated here, time for chains right now. Something I wanna point out though, this little spring right here on ours is way back here. So it says seven, but we kinda gotta use our best judgment. Is seven bad and it needs to be done right now, but six is no problem, you don't need to worry about it. You're gonna kinda have to use your judgment there. All right, here's the deal. Whether we're talking about the ribs exposed on the tensioner, or we're talking about the data that we looked at in the scan tool. If you're close, put chains on it. Here's why. I would rather you do your timing chains 10,000 miles too early than be one mile too late and have bent valves. The timing chain job is not easy, it's not cheap. You can do it yourself, but a lot of people opt not to. The cost difference between putting valves in an engine and doing timing chains and maintenance is probably two to three, maybe even more times more to do the bent valve repair. So if you do it early, you're way better off than being one even foot too late. Now you may remember we had those weird numbers kind of bouncing all around and also, we had an N205, this solenoid right here, missing two bolts. And what I was wondering is what would happen if we put two bolts in it <laughs> so that uh, it was you know, basically installed proper. That's the cover, that's the solenoid. Watch what happens. And that's just by hand. Did you see it move just a tiny bit? See that gap almost completely closed. So let's definitely get these bolts in. I have no idea if this is gonna do anything or not. We have a thing that's not right that we're gonna try and get as right as possible. 
I suppose you could make the case that some of this poor running could be causing those numbers to get wonky, or it could be the result of, oh. So check it out, on our screen, you remember before it was going down to six, up to 14. Now, it's traveling a bit beyond, but again, that could be because the car's not running perfectly, way better than it was before. So this is gonna blow your mind. Sometimes when you don't put parts in right, they don't work right. This is why in every video where we're talking about something, trying to diagnose something, I'm trying to show you guys something I always say, do a thorough visual inspection. Now, I've been looking at these cars for well over 20 years. So things like that stand out to me pretty vividly, but looking at that part should be pretty clear to you. And I don't think that fixed our car, whatever the heck's going on here, but it got that number back to a place where I'm a bit more comfortable with anyway. So with the graph up on the screen now, you can kind of see the green line going up and under and over and under and over and under the red. And that's probably pretty normal. Let's see what happens when we unplug our variator if something changes. So now we just lost both signals. Check it out. We lost our actual and our specified because we created a fault code. So here's where that leaves us. If you have a bunch of noise coming from the timing chain, do the chains. If you have timing related faults, go ahead and do the chains. If any of those numbers were borderline, the seven notches out on the timing chain tensioner, do the timing chains. If you aren't borderline, this may be something you wanna check every few months or every oil change, just to be sure you're staying within that proper range. Obviously doing it yourself, you're gonna save a bunch of money. Having a shop do that timing job, like a full, proper, by the book timing job, can be, two grand or more, but if you wait, that's gonna be a three, four, five, six thousand plus dollar job. I have seen timing chains fail where it punched a hole or cracked a piston and now you're buying a whole engine. And of course, ain't nobody got time for that. It's always better to do 10,000 miles too early than one mile too late. Now, I got a car that looks horrible, runs pretty poor, and needs some serious love. So we're gonna do that in a separate video, but with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.